So in this video, I wanted to do a deep dive into one of my favorite families of rotring pens, and that is the 900 series. It's actually, there's a pencil too, so my favorite rotring series of pens and pencils. This isn't a famous series like the Rotring 600 or the 800, but to me, it's one of the coolest. This comes from kind of the peak Rotring era, at least for me, which would be the late 80s, early 90s. And it persisted for a while. There's some complexity because Rotring was sold and moved production to Japan, all this other stuff. But uh, I just wanted to really focus on the pens, not so much on the history. So here's the Rotring 900. This is the Rollerball. Uh, Rotring 900s were sold in two finishes, chrome and matte or satin, whatever you want to call it. And the pens and pencils are distinctive for three, I would say, reasons. One is this design here. It's a really beautifully done bevel. It's kind of a wave. I'm not sure exactly the technical term, but it's, it looks great and it feels very cool in your hand. Second, they have this clip. This is a, I would call it a wire clip. Surprisingly functional, but it's very distinctive looking. A few companies did this sort of new wavy wire clip, high design clip, whatever you want to call it, around 1990, including Rotring and Platinum. Uh, but it's definitely distinctive. I think it's, it's very cool. Uh, and then lastly, some of the Rotring pens and pencils have a body knock or side knock. So this is the mechanical pencil. And you don't push it rather than, rather you kind of, break it and you don't actually break it, but you push it in the middle in and the lead extends. This body knock or side knock is not a mechanism we see a lot anymore. Uh, it's rather complex, it's hard to pull off, it's uh, hard to do well, I guess, and has a lot of tiny little fiddly parts. So that is the other thing that's distinctive about the series. So now let's get into each one of the models and we'll move pretty quickly. And then if people like this, please let me know if you think it was a boring history lesson. That's fine too, also let me know. So this is the Rotring 900 Rollerball. You can see what it looks like, it's very simple. The wave design goes through to the bottom. There's a little bit of plastic here. Rotring does mean red ring, so they always have a red ring somewhere on them. Uh, just a very simple conical tip into a Rollerball. And there's almost no design elements on the pen. You have the pattern, the red ring, and that's it. No logo, uh, no, you know, built-in clip, no indentations, nothing like that. It's very simple. It's a heavy pen. I don't know the weight, but it's definitely over 30 grams. Uh, and it's on the long side. So here it is. And let's put it up next to, let's see what we have for reference. Uh, Kind of a standard gel pen. This is a precise or a, yeah, precise V7 from Pilot, and you can see it's almost as big. So this is not a huge pen, but think about it. This is all plastic. It's retractable, and it has like a bunch of lightweight components. This on the other hand is all metal. I don't know exactly what metal. Rotring doesn't say, but this thing has some heft to it. It has some size. If you go ahead and put the cap on it and post it. You're looking at a very large kind of executive type pen, like a flagship type pen. Even with a cap on there, it is a large pen. But this was, as far as Rotring numbers go, you have the 300, the 500, the 600, the 800, the 700, I missed. There's a 600, 700, 800, and this is the 900. It never went higher than the 900. So there you have it. Uh, opening it up, you can see this is plastic, that little red piece, but there's no other plastic in this pen. We have uh, all metal here. It's probably a nice piece of brass. There's a spring in here in the back. And then I have a modern refill in it. A, you know, a 20 plus year old refill would not work. So it takes a standard European rollerball refill in this case, uh, Schmidt 888, which is a really nice option. And you can see tightens down perfectly. And this line right here is spot on. So Schmidt 888 in a Rotring 900 rollerball. Next up, we have this one. This is the chrome finish. You can see it is really phenomenal. And the chrome pens tend to be a lot harder to find. 
So if you do find one of these for a great price, you want to jump on it. So this is the Stylograph. It's basically a fountain pen, but it has a rollerball type tip, except that there's no uh, rolling piece in here. What this is, is this is kind of like a fountain pen and that has a uh, capillary action to feed the ink out, but it just sort of writes the way a technical pencil or technical pen, I guess, would write. So there's a feed, it uses ink cartridges. I don't have one installed right now, but it's essentially a fountain pen with a different tip. And these were popular in the late 80s, early 90s as technical instruments. So they basically you had to go draw straight up and down to make them use, uh, be used as effectively as possible. And you can see this is actually a plastic component. They didn't make the stylograph in all metal. Uh, what I did purchase eventually was the fountain pen head. And uh, these were, I believe, sold separately. At least you could buy them separately now. And I actually got it in the left-handed nib, which is very cool, so I am left-handed. And now with this installed, I have a Rotring 900 fountain pen for you to look at. It's a very simple nib, just bended steel. I don't believe it was ever sold in a gold. Again, it's a very simple pen. It's beautifully designed and wonderfully executed and heavy and on the large side, but there's not a lot of complexity to it. On the size side, look at it next to a, this is a Sailor 1911. It is, each of these are half inch, so it is a full inch longer than the Sailor 1911, which is pretty crazy considering they would both be considered full size pens. Obviously this is skinny and all that, but it's a, a larger pen than you might, than it might appear on video. When I first got my hand on one of these, I was actually pretty surprised. So that's the fountain pen and the stylograph. And now you could actually see the uh, design of each, but you could also see the chrome. I almost put it together. There you go. And we'll get the chrome out of the way. I know it tends to mess up the video. Okay, so now we'll keep going. What do we have here? This is the ballpoint, again in satin. And this, I would, be cons I would consider this to be the standard ballpoint, which it has a top knock. Very cool, push in, push down, simple system. Get to see some action at the top. The wire, uh, the wire clip actually does some work now. And it just is a push mechanism. It does seize a little bit, but that's just more due to its age than anything else. And you can see now the front piece is slightly different. It's a lot longer and it uses a standard rotring refill. It's probably due for a replacement, but it's a standard uh, Parker G2 style refill. And there's a little bit of stuff going on in there. I think this thing probably needs to be worked on, but very cool pen. But this is probably, I would say, out of the whole series, this ballpoint is the least desirable of them because of this right here. This is the same ballpoint. And if you look at them, they are identical. But this one is actually a side knock ballpoint. So the two pens are identical looking. You can't, you, I've... I purchased enough of these to tell you that it's really difficult to tell these apart. And one is a push button, one is a side knock. The side knock, I could tell you, is much more desirable. The uh, side knock is a little quirky. There's some tiny interior components, so if you buy one of these that's had a lot of usage, it's not gonna work that well. But, uh, and this one's, I would say, fine. I need to tweak it. It doesn't always return as well but you just need to apply a little bit of extra pressure and it should be fine. It just needs a little lube or maybe a spring change, something like that. Anyway, this is the Rotring 900 ballpoint in the side knock. Very cool. This is my favorite out of the series. So I tend to write with uh, ballpoints a fair bit lately. This also uses, uh, sorry, it does not use a Parker G2 style refill. This one uses 
a D1 refill, so a tiny little refill, which is kind of amusing given quite how large this pen is. Uh, and again, here, let's give it comparison to like a, you know, a, a Muji type gel pen. This thing is much larger, much, much heavier. And again, huge pen, tiny refill, which is very funny. If we open this up, we can see what's inside and it's kind of a standard body knock mechanism. It's this little cone on top of a plunger. And I'm pretty sure that this is missing a spring. When I bought it, it did not have a spring. There's a little piece right here, that little indentation. That looks like it'd be perfect for a spring. And I think that would help with the return. But unfortunately, there's not a lot of documentation on these. This did not come with any sort of uh, instruction manual or anything like that. If you try to search for Rotring 900 ballpoint spring, not a lot of answers come up, but I have seen some images. I'm pretty sure I need to get a spring for this one. Now I wanted to point out one quick thing is that the size of these is actually a little bit different. If you look at the rollerball versus the ballpoint, they're the same length, they're very similar length when the rollerball is capped, but the body of the rollerball and the fountain pen, they're a good deal larger than that of the ballpoint and the mechanical pencil. It just, uh, it's not a huge deal. It doesn't really affect their performance, but it's definitely a difference. And I think that's because the rollerball and the fountain pen are generally considered to be like flagship type items where ballpoints and mechanical pencils were considered to be more utilitarian. Lastly, we have, I would say this is the most desirable of the bunch, and this is the Rotring 900 mechanical pencil. And mechanical pencils have kind of gained the biggest following over the years as far as cult collector items. So having the mechanical pencil, which is a kind of the biggest deal out of those, but also having it in the chromed and in top or very good condition was definitely a big, uh, big find for me. So you can see this is a, uh, a, what I would call a double knock, but it's uh, not technically a double knock because I don't think this is a standard knock. But anyway, there's no tip exposed. When you knock it, you expose uh, some lead and you expose that little metal pipe there. So you get lead, get a good extension. And then when you push it back, when you're done with it, it will take the pipe back in. It's a rather short pipe. So this is not ideal for a technical drawing, but it's a beautiful pencil nonetheless. And this mechanism works flawlessly, whereas the other one doesn't work so great. This one has a really nice logo on it. Some of them have a logo saying Japan on it and a Rotring logo, but you can see this is as a big vertical logo, small horizontal logo. With this one, this is the ballpoint side knock, small horizontal logo, no made in Japan. Rollerball, no logo, <clears throat> and style graph, no logo. Some of these have a logo on the cap. Some say Japan on the cap. They don't all say Japan on the cap. And that's the sort of thing that I don't exactly know the history of, uh, which I'll try to sort out and I'll follow up with the article on unsharpened.com. Lastly, I want to point out this pen. This is the Altro. Altro was available around the same time. I think it kicked off around 88, 1988, 1987, around there. And what it is, is this is a stylograph. So it's basically a plastic version of the 900. You can see the designs are identical, same clip, same wave design, and same size, same red ring placement. The logo treatment is a little bit different. The Outro was known for being sold in crazy colors, like this sort of like Miami inspiration or whatever. But you can see identical, but this is plastic. You can buy these for about $20 nowadays if you could find it. And these are uh, very hard to find and a fair bit more expensive depending on how you, how you buy it, who you buy from and all that sort of thing. So if you are interested, there's the outro. If you want the real one, you have the 900. But either way, the connection between the Altro and the 900, I think is very cool. So yeah, that is uh, one of my probably highlights of my pen buying 
over the years, and that's the Rotary 900 collection. Uh, it's not complete, obviously. I would like to have more chrome and less satin, but uh, you know, you, you do what you can and keep searching online for some more items, but uh, it's really hard to find this stuff when it's getting on 30 years old. So Rotary 900, if this is interesting to you, please, please let me know. If it was boring, also please let me know. Thanks a lot.